welcome to the next lecture to the course of nanostructured materials synthesis properties self assembly and applications uh, this is the sixth lecture of module 2 and we are discussing methodologies of growing nanostructures and uh, in the last lecture we discussed the methodology how we can grow nanostructured films using the chemical vapor deposition technique which is called the CVD technique. Today we will continue on this topic and we would be discussing today on the physical vapor deposition technique. The physical vapor deposition technique uh, is basically involves deposition of atomistic processes that means deposition of atoms in which the material is vaporized from a solid or liquid source in the form of atoms or molecules and these uh, vaporized source of atoms and molecules are then transported in the form of a vapor through a vacuum or low pressure gaseous environment. It can be a plasma and it is uh, this uh, atom and molecules traveling through this uh, uh, low pressure system uh, is taken towards the substrate where these atoms and molecules condense and form a thin film. So, this is uh, typically a PVD process that is why in short it is PVD for physical vapor deposition uh, which is uh, different from what we studied earlier which was the chemical vapor deposition technique. So, here atoms and molecules are being transported through a system. Uh, it will be a chamber which would be at low pressure or we call vacuum with some amount of uh, gas or plasma and it is taken, uh, it is flown towards the substrate. The molecules travel towards the substrate where it condenses and forms a film. So, PVD processes are used to deposit uh, films with thicknesses which are in the range of a few nanometers to thousands of nanometers. So, a wide range of thicknesses are possible uh, to make uh, films uh, which are uh, of the order of few nanometers to thousands of nanometers uh, and it typically is used in multi-layer coatings in graded composition deposits, uh, very thick deposits and also on freestanding structures. Uh, here graded composition basically means that till certain thickness you have one composition and then as you have uh, another layer or the, uh, as you go deep into the film, the composition is varying. So, that is why it is called a graded composition deposit or a graded composition film. You can have multi layer coatings that means one layer of a material X which is on top of a material Y so you, and then a material Z. So, you are making different layers of uh, different materials uh, using PVD processes. So, you can make thin films to thick films. Uh, a large range of uh, thicknesses are possible using the physical vapor deposition technique. The main categories of this PVD technique uh, can be uh, divided into four uh, major uh, disciplines or four major methodologies. They are the vacuum deposition technique which is also called the evaporation technique. The other is the sputter deposition technique. Uh, the third one is arc vapor deposition and the fourth is iron plating. Uh, as you can see from the name itself, you can get some idea that the what is different among these four techniques uh, belonging to the general PVD process. Here as you see it is basically built on evaporation and so some material is there and you evaporate in a vacuum 
and you deposit it on a target or a substrate. Uh, uh, here you sputter something, sputter means you have a material which has to be uh, coated on a substrate and you bombard that material with some ions or some other beam and atoms are ejected from the target and then they are deposited on a substrate. So, that is sputter deposition. Arc vapor from the term arc, you can understand that an arc uh, electric discharge has to be generated and during that uh, there is a plasma which is created and then you can uh, deposit uh, atoms uh, from that phase. Iron plating includes uh, methodologies where you can have uh, 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 the ions assisting in the deposition and uh, we will discuss each of these four methods a uh, little bit more in detail uh, and all four belong to the physical vapor deposition process. So, from the term physical PVD uh, and CVD, the main difference is in the chemical vapor deposition process, you can see that you start with some precursors and some chemicals are required and uh, normally they involve lesser energy. Physical vapor deposition processes are uh, not using that kind of chemicals, mostly they start with solids and uh, they uh, are maybe metals or compounds and then you use high energy uh, or evaporation techniques or sputter deposition etcetera or electrical discharge to process to form the films. So, uh, coming to the first methodology of the PVD process, it is the uh, vacuum deposition process uh, in which material from a thermal vaporization source reaches the substrate with little or no collision with gas molecules in the space between the source and the substrate. In other words, uh, you have this uh, filament which has uh, which on heating you have a material on, on this. So, on thermal evaporation of the material thermal vaporization uh, you will have uh, the molecules uh, going through this vacuum or where very little gas molecules are there. So, they will not face any collision and they will be deposited on the substrate here. So, this kind of a vacuum evaporation technique is possible uh, uh, to make thin films. Normally, uh, the heat source that you use here for heating the compounds uh, which would be evaporated is uh, you use tungsten wire coils as the filament during the vacuum evaporation. So, this is a very simple technique, it is an evaporation technique you can call it or a vacuum deposition technique where you are using tungsten wire or similar wires uh, which uh, can give rise to a thermal effect and uh, the material which has to be uh, deposited on the substrate can be coated on this wire and then because of thermal heating it will evaporate and pass through a vacuum chamber where uh, it will meet very little collisions because the density of gaseous molecules is very less and you will expect that those molecules which are evaporated from the surface of this filament will go on to the substrate and make a uniform film. Now, so this is a vacuum deposition technique. The, the next technique, uh, oh, uh, we can discuss this little bit more on detail, the instrumentation of the vacuum deposition technique. So, here is the uh, filament uh, where you will have your uh, vaporization source. So, uh, this will uh, start generate evaporating from the filament uh, where the source is there. So, it will the molecules will start evaporating and they have to go on to the target which is here uh, and or subst uh, it, it has to go to the uh, substrate uh, here and the substrate is held in a uh, kind of fixture which is shown here uh, 
such that the substrate does not fall uh, and the substrate can be heated and that uh, heating can be done by this substrate heater which is shown here uh, that is the heater for the uh, fixture and uh, you can also heat the substrate using uh, a heater which is little away from the substrate and this will heat uh, radiate, uh, radiatively and so you can heat the substrate you can heat the substrate holder or the substrate fixture and of course you have to heat this coil which has the uh, source which has to be evaporated now apart from this there are uh, possibilities of uh, rotation uh, here and you can monitor uh, the substrate temperature uh, you can control or you can uh, monitor the deposition rate here uh, so you can have many other fixtures uh, and electronics uh, along this vacuum system which needs uh, uh, pumps to evacuate the gas so you have a roughing pump and you have a high vacuum pumping system here so this is uh, more or less a schematic uh, diagram which shows you about the uh, evaporation source the substrate the substrate heaters uh, the fixture heater uh, the uh, view port the shutter and then you have this high vacuum gauges you have the gas inlet uh, and the thermocouples etc uh, which uh, are all connected to this methodology of depositing a film using uh, a pvd technique which is based on evaporation or it is also called vacuum uh, deposition. So, uh, one needs to have a uh, good vacuum and uh, you need to have proper pumping systems and monitoring the vacuum, the temperature uh, of the substrate uh, because certain growth uh, of films can take place only under certain temperatures. So, uh, the variables in this technique of evaporation and va or vacuum deposition are the substrate temperature, uh, the deposition rate, the environment inside the chamber uh, the, that is the pressure and which gas you are using, uh, the angle of incidence of the depositing atom flux. So, you can rotate that uh, source or substrate one of them you can move the substrate surface chemistry and morphology if you modify that will also affect the uh, deposition in this condition. So, all these things we just discussed substrate temperature deposition rate uh, environment since you can change. So, with how you have to monitor each change and uh, that is what is shown in this picture the, the how you can monitor the substrate temperature, the deposition rate, uh, the uh, rotation uh, here and the uh, heater which is heating the substrate radiatively and the pumping systems etcetera. The uh, gas inside can be modified uh, and uh, you can use different types of gases. In addition, you can also use masks here to form patterns or if you want to uh, make films uh, not continuous, but according to a certain pattern or design. Then you have to have a mask here, uh, which is kept in line of the uh, deposition between the evaporating source and the substrate and depending on the design of the mask you will have a patterning on the surface of the substrate. So, uh, this sometimes masks are important for uh, making devices where you have to make certain co contacts or certain uh, circuits and you want to coat say a conducting material like copper uh, according to certain design which will be then useful to make contacts. Uh, so, uh, these are all the variables we discussed right now.
and each of them has to be controlled very carefully and then the growth rate can be modified how the films is growing whether it is forming as a uniform film or there is islands which are forming and is the rate of growth too fast or too slow uh, we can uh, control using these parameters. Now, the advantages of vacuum deposition, now, the vacuum deposition is also called a line of sight deposition. Uh, that means, uh, you the substrate is directly in the line of or in the in front of the evaporating source and uh, this is called line of sight vision and in this kind of techn technique, uh, it allows you to use masks to define areas of deposition, which is what I described just before that if you design a mask uh, and keep it in front of the uh, substrate, then this mask will allow only certain portions of the substrate to be covered by the atoms which are falling. Uh, which are being evaporating from this uh, filament or on top of this filament and uh, so you can create a pattern or a design. So, line of sight deposition allows the use of masks to define areas where you want deposition and where you do not want deposition. The next thing is you can deposit very large area uh, so, uh, using very large area sources. Uh, so, you can use something which is called a hog trough uh, crucible, uh, you can use multiple sources. Uh, so, instead of one source here, you can use multiple sources and uh, very large area sources can be used to deposit materials. You can achieve uh, high deposition rates and deposition uh, rate can be monitored relatively easily as compared to other techniques. So, these are some of the advantages of the vacuum deposition pro, uh, method, which is also called the evaporation method. Uh, further, you can uh, use various types of uh, vaporization source materials uh, such as uh, chunks or powders or wires or chips and the vaporization source material uh, which normally is used can be found with very high purity and relatively inexpensively. So, they are not very expensive to use and high purity films are easily deposited from high purity source material. Since the deposition uh, environment which is the ambient cannot can be made as non contaminating as desired. So, overall this technique is relatively inexpensive compared to other PVD techniques and hence uh, this kind of thermal evaporation uh, or vacuum deposition technique is uh, being used routinely in several uh, types of materials uh, and uh, one of the uh, most important thing is you can use different forms of material. You can use chunks, powders, wires and chips etcetera. So, it is a reasonably uh, inexpensive method uh, for making large scale uh, thin films. Now, there are of course, some uh, disadvantages of vacuum or therm or evaporation technique, vacuum deposition or evaporation uh, technique where uh, one of the thing is uh, the line of sight deposition, uh, though it has some advantages uh, where you can use masks, but this also gives you a poor surface coverage and you need elaborated uh, tooling and fixtures uh, to have uh, perform this kind of vacuum deposition and uh, uh, surface uh, coverage is little difficult. Uh, similarly, uh, this methodology uh, which depends on the line of sight deposition provides uh, poor uniformity of the film over a large surface area. Again, unless you have very complex fixturing uh, 
and tooling, uh, it is difficult to deposit uniformly the film over a very large area. Uh, then if you want to deposit many different alloys and compounds, uh, this technique is uh, has some uh, drawbacks. Uh, it may be good for metals etcetera, uh, but for binaries or ternaries alloys and compounds uh, sometimes it gives us uh, not a very uniform film. And so, uh, these are some of the disadvantages of the uh, vacuum deposition technique or the thermal technique, uh, which uh, we can remove in going to the other techniques, which we will discuss. The other disadvantages of vacuum de deposition is the involvement of uh, high radiant heat during processing. So, that is another disadvantage. The vaporized material uh, is not used very efficiently. So, uh, you, uh, you, what you are vaporizing is not only falling on your substrate, uh, but it is also falling on several other parts. So, non uh, utilization or poor utilization of the vaporized material is one drawback. Then you have non optimal fill properties, example you have pinholes, uh, then you get less than bulk density of the films. Many times you get columnar morphology and you sometimes have high residual film stresses in the uh, films produced using vacuum deposition. There are uh, few processing variables available for film property control in the thermal uh, evaporation technique or the vacuum deposition technique. So, uh, with so many disadvantages, of course, uh, one of the ad main advantage of the vacuum deposition is it is inexpensive and it can use a wide variety of materials. But we also saw that there are many disadvantages of the vacuum deposition technique. So, uh, now let us look at another deposition technique and uh, this is the uh, sputter deposition. In the sputter deposition, uh, basically uh, you deposit particles which are vaporized from a surface which we call a target by the physical sputtering process. So, you deposit particles which are coming out of a target and these atoms or particles which are coming out of the target uh, are basically produced by a physical sputtering process. So, what is this uh, sputtering process? Uh, the physical sputtering is a non-thermal vaporization, where surface atoms are physically ejected from a solid surface by momentum transfer. So, it is not an evaporation technique. So, what you are doing is you are bombarding a target. So, this is your target and you are bombarding uh, the target with uh, some sputtering either it is uh, atom atomic beam which is highly energetic or a gaseous ion which is accelerated from a plasma. So, here you see a plasma and this is a gaseous ion beam which is being accelerated towards the target and the target atoms uh, then uh, come out and uh, then they fall on the substrate and you get the uh, film on the substrate. So, there are two parts. First is the sputtering uh, using ions generated from plasma onto the target, which then uh, sputters atoms of the target material, which you want to be coated on a substrate. So, that the first is getting those uh, ions or uh, atoms out of the surface using uh, either energized atoms or ions from a plasma and then depositing them on the substrate. So, uh, basically ma many uh, different compounds can be made you, because the target uh, 
uh, can be any compound and then you can attempt to uh, generate atoms of these species and uh, then they are uh, kind of moving towards the substrate and then the deposit on the substrate and you get a film. So, these are examples of titanium nitride and zirconium nitride, uh, which are commonly reactively sputter deposited by using a reactive gas in the plasma. So, if you have a reactive gas, then it is called a reactive sputter deposition and uh, uh, you can have this technique to make films like titanium nitride and zirconium nitride etcetera. So, this is uh, what is being shown here. Uh, so, this is the target and you generate uh, those kind of ions and then those ions fall on the substrate and uh, basically this is through momentum transfer that you are creating these ions not through evaporation and you get films on the substrate. Now, uh, there are many things uh, which happen when you are uh, bombarding a surface uh, during sputter deposition with energetic atomic sized particles. So, here uh, is your energetic particle and it falls on your surface. So, this is your surface and on the surface you have uh, say an adsorbed surface species and uh, this adsorbed surface species gets enhanced mobility when this energetic particle falls onto it. What else can happen? You can uh, create uh, these energetic particles can go deep inside and get implanted and you can have then there may be lattice defects and uh, these energetic particle can get trapped in the lattice defect. It can get channeled like this through some channels and uh, this is known. Uh, it can also create a cascade. It can also generate ions which are reflected, electrons which are ejected which are called secondary electrons and some of the sputtered atoms from the surface can come out. It can also possible, it can be possible that some of the atoms which are coming out of the surface interact with the energetic particles and then they are back scattered. So, several processes can occur. So, depending on what you are looking at, you can uh, study some of these events which are taking place uh, at, the, at the same time. Uh, in certain cases, but all the events need not possibly take a place at the same time. There may be one, two, three events taking place, but it is not necessary all the events listed here are taking place in every sputter deposition. That would depend on different uh, parameters of the sputter deposition process. So, uh, we saw mainly that you have energetic particle falling on a surface bombarded on a uh, to a surface which normally creates enhanced mobility for any atom or molecule on the surface and those atoms and molecules can move around and uh, you can get these uh, uh, surface atoms redeposited onto on the, the sputtered atoms which are coming out redeposited or you can take some of the atoms can really come out or they are back scattered here and many other things can happen including ion implantation which is happening here. So, near the surface, this is a surface region, all these activities are happening and as you are going deep interior, there are less activity in the near surface region. So, this is the surface region, this is the near surface region, most of the activity is happening in the surface region when a surface is bombarded with energetic atomic sized particles. So, uh, what are these different effects and what are the time scales of these different effects during the sputter deposition of this process by which we are trying to make uh, films on substrates. So, you can classify these events 
in four different ways depending on the time uh, required for those effects. So, if very uh, in the very small time domain say less than 10 to the power minus 12 second which is less than 1 picosecond you can have effects which are called the prompt effects like lattice collisions, physical sputtering, reflection from the surface. In the range of some 10 nanosecond to 1 picosecond, so this is the range 10 minus 12 to 10 to the power minus 10 second, 10 to the power minus 10 second is 10 nanosecond. So, between 1 picosecond to 10 nanosecond, you can see what are called cooling effects, uh, where you see thermal spikes along with collision cascades. So, in the picture you can see there is the collision cascade which is happening. So, this is happening in the time scale of around 1 picosecond to 10 nanosecond. And uh, then you can have delayed effects. These delayed effects can take long time. They can take a few seconds or uh, mic microseconds to sometimes years and they involve uh, processes like diffusion, strain induced diffusion, segregation and then there are something which are called persistent effects. Example, gas incorporation or compressive stress due to recoil implantation. So, uh, when you have something like uh, implantation or uh, recoil implantation, so you can have these kind of delayed effects uh, or persistent effects in these uh, sputter deposited films. Now, uh, coming uh, to another uh, methodology, so we looked at uh, physical vapor deposition two methodologies. Uh, one was the evaporation method or uh, which is also called the vacuum deposition pro uh, process. And the second one that we looked at was the sputter deposition process. And uh, now we look at the third method which is the arc vapor deposition. So, as the term arc uh, suggests to you that you have to generate an arc and an arc is normally generated between two electrodes at different uh, potential. One is the cathode, one is the anode. So, uh, you can have a cathodic arc uh, like it is shown here. So, you have here a cathodic arc uh, and you can also have an anodic arc. So, once you have a cathodic arc that means, the electrode which is forming the cathode uh, from there you can uh, generate uh, a plasma and you can uh, get a deposition on the substrate of atoms uh, belonging to this cathodic material. So, if you have a cathodic arc, then you can make a film of the cathode material. And if you have anodic arc, then you can make a film from the anode material. So, uh, basically a high current and a low voltage arc is used to vaporize a cathodic electrode it is called the cathodic arc or anodic electrode which is called the anodic arc and deposit the vaporized material on a substrate. So, the substrate is here and when the vaporized material is highly ionized and the substrate is biased. So, uh, towards uh, the ions moving towards the substrate, uh, then you can get deposition and uh, mostly arc vapor deposition is used for hard coatings and decorative coatings and very commonly it is used. So, uh, you use basically a high current and a vo low voltage arc uh, discharge system. Now, uh, then you can also have a technique which is called the iron plating technique. In the iron plating uh, or ion assisted deposition which is called IAD or ion vapor deposition IVD. Now, in this techniques uh, 
there is concurrent or periodic bombardment of the depositing film by atomic sized energetic particles to modify uh, and control the properties of the depositing film. So, uh, you can first uh, vaporize the depositing material by any of the methods which we discussed earlier. So, you can vaporize the material that you want to deposit by evaporation or sputtering or by arc erosion or by C V D by any of these uh, or decomposition of a chemical vapor precursor. So, any of these methods can be used to uh, first deposit the film and then you uh, either simultaneously or periodically bombard that depositing film by atomic sized energy particles. So, uh, this the one of these is used along with either an atomic or ionic beam to assist the deposition. So, uh, the energetic particles which are normally used for bombardment are ions of an inert or reactive gas uh, or ions of the condensing film material itself. So, you can use different methods you can use a inert gas and its ions or a reactive gas ions or the ions of the same material which is condensing onto the substrate. So, uh, depending on them you can have uh, different schemes. So, in this ion plating scheme uh, you can do the evaporation technique which we discussed earlier, the sputtering technique, the arc erosion technique along with an iron gun. So, when you have this iron gun along with one of these techniques uh, uh, separately uh, you are using an iron gun then this is called an iron beam assisted deposition. Okay. So, you are doing in this iron plating uh, one of these techniques has to be used along with the iron gun which is generating ions and assisting the uh, deposition of the film which the uh, the ions uh, are being generated uh, by either thermal evaporation or through an arc cathode or anode or a sputtering technique. So, there are very various techniques uh, which we already discussed and along with that we use a iron gun and this technique then becomes an iron beam assisted methodology for deposition of thin films. So, what are the steps uh, involved in general in choosing a PVD process? So, uh, in, in all the PVD processes that we discussed uh, using either evaporation, sputter deposition and then uh, this kind of iron assisted uh, uh, deposition or uh, the arc method of deposition. Uh, the first thing that you do is you choose a substrate and the substrate uh, has a very important role to play during the growth of the film and the substrate can be uh, a single crystalline, polycrystalline and it depends on what is the type of film that you are trying to grow. So, uh, choosing a substrate is important and then we need to understand define what are the critical properties of the substrate surface uh, which are important for the film that we need and how these can be determined. So, uh, then we develop an appropriate surface preparation process. The substrate uh, has to be cleaned in a particular manner. So, this is called the surface preparation process which includes cleaning and may involve changing the surface morphology or chemistry. So, that is called surface modification of the substrate. Then you have to select the film material and the film structure to produce the correct film adhesion. You need your film to be uh, strongly bound to the substrate. So, to have that kind of adhesion you need to select proper film material and the structure of the films which you are trying to grow uh, 
on the substrate. So, the film adhesion and film properties that you require uh, need a, a very careful selection of the film materials with which you are going to start and the film structure. Then you need to use uh, your understanding of the various fabrication or the thin film deposition processes to choose the right process which would provide a reducible coating and long term stability of the properties that you want in your thin film. So, that uh, what material you are going to use to coat the substrate uh, it is very important to know because that will enable you to choose the proper fabrication process. Then you need to develop the equipment uh, that is the uh, chamber in which you vacuum uh, has to be generated or the arc has to be generated and if you need to flow of gases and how the substrate can be rotated or the substrate heater has to be placed. So, all that part of a, is, a, is a part of a design to produce an equipment that will give the necessary product throughput. So, you also need a fast product throughput for uh, industry applications and so you the choice of the production equipment is very necessary. The development of the fabrication equipment process parameters, parameter limits and monitoring and the control techniques uh, ultimately will give you uh, the best product and also a high yield. So, it is important to choose a proper substrate, the proper methodology uh, and the proper process uh, parameters uh, along with the appropriate equipment uh, and uh, its uh, quality and design which will ultimately yield a good product with a very high yield. Uh, you have to develop appropriate characterizations uh, to determine the product. So, along with choosing the right substrate, the right uh, uh, materials for the growth of the uh, uh, to generate the uh, uh, molecules which will be deposited on the substrate you have to choose the characterization techniques to determine the properties of the film which you have made. So, you have to also develop techniques for the reprocessing or repair of the defective coating. So, if you have uh, films which have pinholes or which are not forming uh, very uniform films, then there needs to be uh, a possibility of developing a method by which you can remove those pin holes or you can uh, do some annealing or other uh, uh, processing by which you can improve the quality of the film, make it more uniform, make a film which is uh, lacking in pin holes uh, with uniform thicknesses etcetera. Then all these processes etcetera need to be written down, uh, all the specifications and manufacturing process instructions uh, need to be written down uh, in, as a manual for everybody to use at all stages of the processing. So, all the details need to be written down specifically for the manufacturing process, so that proper quality control of these films uh, can be uh, uh, adhered to. Now, uh, we come to another technique. Uh, so, so far we were doing the uh, PVD technique. So, in my previous lecture we did the CVD technique and then today we looked at the physical vapor deposition technique. What are the different kinds? So, four different kinds of PVD techniques we looked at and we looked at their advantages, their disadvantages and the kind of instrumentation that you need and uh, the kind of parameters you need to control like the substrate, the substrate temperature, the uh, gas pressure, uh, the distance between the substrate and the uh, source etcetera. So, now we discussed another technique 
which is a highly precise technique, although it is a bit expensive technique, is uh, the molecular beam epitaxy method. So, what is epitaxy? Uh, epitaxy is basically the growth or deposition of a monocrystalline film on a monocrystalline substrate. Uh, now, if you have the same uh, film, uh, a different film and substrate. So, when the film and substrate are different, then it is called heteroepitaxy. And when the film and the substrate are the same, then you call it homoepitaxy. So, epitaxy basically means uh, depositing or growing a monocrystalline film on a monocrystalline substrate and it is of two types. It can be homoepitaxy or heteroepitaxy. By molecular beam epitaxy MBE, uh, what we mean is uh, that we generate uh, fluxes of constituent uh, matrix and doping species uh, to form a molecular beam. So, these fluxes basically mean you are generating a molecular beam and then their reaction at the substrate. So, the doping species and the matrix species form the molecular beam and they react at the substrate to form an ordered overlayer. So, uh, the substrate and the overlayer are exactly matching and hence it is called a epitaxy. So, the overlayer is uh, guided by the structure of the substrate and hence it takes the structure exactly of the substrate. Then only you get epitaxy. Now, the capability of the MBE technique is to precisely control both chemical composition and the doping profiles. So, it is a very precise technique. You can uh, fabricate uh, pre pre uh, precision semiconductors, uh, especially heterostructures, having very thin layers from a fraction of a micron down to a monolayer. So, you can have precise fabrication of uh, films on substrates with very precise uh, control of the structure uh, which is uh, more or less matching with the substrate structure. So, that is why it is called epitaxy and it is called molecular beam epitaxy we, because we are generating flux or molecular beams of the matrix and doping species. So, in the MBE process, uh, we have a source which is heated to produce a evaporated beam of particles and these particles then travel through a very high vacuum to the substrate and on the substrate they condense as a thin film. So, this is the typical uh, MBE process. Uh, so, you have a source again to produce uh, evaporated beam of particles. These particles travel uh, through uh, chamber in which very few gas molecules are there. That means, the chamber is in high vacuum and then these particles are directed towards the substrate and on the substrate they condense as a thin film. So, here uh, there is a picture of what is happening. So, this is uh, the substrate and uh, you can see on the atomic scale and then uh, in an this is an organic molecular beam epitaxy. So, organic molecules are coming and forming a layer and this top layer is exactly being guided by the substrate uh, structure and you form these kind of layers uh, one on top of the other. So, this is organic molecular beam epitaxy because organic molecules are part of the uh, dope and flux on the substrate. Now, if you have uh, atoms like you have here gallium atom and arsenic atom and they are falling as molecular beams or fluxes of these gallium and arsenic atoms on top of a substrate. So, this one is the substrate wafer and on top this gallium and arsenic are uh, falling as a molecular beam. Then they form this layer on top of this substrate and the structure of the gallium arsenide layer exactly matches the structure of the uh, substrate. And so, this is a typical 
molecular beam epitaxy method. Gallium arsenide as you know is a very, very important a semiconductor and used for many, many applications. So, this is using an MB technique, you can manufacture very precise uh, films with controlled uh, morphology and controlled composition of gallium arsenide uh, as epitaxial layers on proper substrates. Now, uh, the mechanistic pathway uh, during the MBE process is basically you have absorption to the surface, uh, uh, adsorption to the surface, then surface migration and dissociation, then incorporation into the crystal lattice and thermal desorption. So, these are the ways the molecular beam interacts with the surface and the film grows with first adsorbing on the surface and then it tries to migrate on the surface and so they go uh, the atoms move to the right positions and then incorporate themselves into the crystal lattice and unwanted molecules are thermally dissolved. Now, uh, so this desorption and adsorption depends on the temperature. So, there is a, a important effect of temperature on the adsorption and desorption in the MBE process. So, at low temperature you will have atoms which will stick where they land uh, without rearranging. So, that would lead to poor crystal quality. Uh, if you have high temperature then atoms will adsorb and desorb very fast. So, they will re evaporate from the surface uh, too rapidly and the growth rates will be very small again leading to poor crystal quality. So, you have to optimize between a low temperature and high temperature. The temperature should be sufficient. So, you need uh, appropriate intermediate temperature and at that temperature the atoms will have sufficient energy to adsorb and then move to the proper position on the surface, which will give the epitaxy or which will uh, lead to the epitaxial layer. And that will be uh, the correct uh, growth of the crystal which you want. So, you need to optimize the temperature uh, such that you do not have a very low temperature to have the atoms are sticking wherever they are falling or you have very high temperature when the atoms uh, adsorb and desorb immediately or re evaporate. You want a temperature where the atom adsorbs and then has some energy to move around to find the uh, proper position which has a minimum in energy uh, on the surface and hence will add to the growing crystal and to the growing epitaxial layer. So, the parameters for the molecular beam epitaxial method or the MBE method, you need ultra high vacuum and you need uh, some conditions for the mean free path, which is given by the diameter and the uh, concentration of gas molecules n and by this equation. And the concentration of gas molecules of course, depends on the pressure and the temperature. So, all these things need to be controlled uh, when you control the MBE process. The advantages of the molecular beam epitaxial method is that it permits uh, the control of composition and doping of the structure at the monolayer level. That means, you can get a single monolayer uh, with the right composition with the right epitaxy using the MBE technique. It can, it is also advantageous because it can be controlled in situ by surface techniques. You can, uh, while the layer is growing, the epitaxial layer is growing, you can study the layer by very efficient uh, techniques like the reflection high energy electron diffraction, which is called the Reed technique, also the OJ electron spectroscopy or optical reflectance or laser interferometry. All these techniques allow you to control the composition and the doping of the growing structure. So, these are some advantages of using the molecular beam epitaxy method. Uh, 
Finally, the application of MBE, the control of uh, the molecular beam epitaxy method allows us to fabricate very intricate structure of layers. So, you can precisely make a, a very say a 10 layer system or a 4 layer system and each layer having the condition that you want by properly choosing your flux that means the molecular beams and the temperatures etc and the substrate you can really control the layers and grow uh, highly ordered epitaxial layers uh, uh, of various compositions. So, uh, it is a very, very uh, important tool to grow uh, multi layers. So, thank you uh, for this lecture and we will continue our course on nanostructure materials. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.